Yo, Woke Kindergarten family, I'm really excited to share one of my favorite books for you. And I just got hip to this book not too long ago. And it makes so much sense to read this book now because we've been talking so much about pronouns. Now, the last time you probably saw me, you saw me in a video telling you that some of the names I like to be called are Akia or Ki or Miss Akia, right? Some of those names feel good to me. I want you to think about what names feel good to you. And then when you think about those names and those names you like to be called, also think about the pronouns that feel good to you. Now for me, like I said before, I don't really like when people call me he or call me she. I really, really like for people to say they. They makes me feel good inside. It makes my heart feel good. It makes my mind feel good. It makes my body feel good. And so whenever you think about the pronouns that you want to be called, so if somebody is telling you, he's reading that book, and then you don't like the way that he feels, then have conversations with your parents or any of your family members that you trust about what you like to be called. And you can ask other people in your family and your friends what they like to be called. Today, the book I'm going to read is called They, She, He. Easy as A, B, C. Now, if you don't know me as a teacher, I'm gonna tell you this right now. I am a silly teacher. I'm a teacher who loves to sing. I love music. I love rhythm. I love feeling the books that I read. And so I might just actually read this book in a way where it feels and sounds like music. Are you excited for that? I know I am. I think this book will be really helpful when we're thinking about all of the amazing people we know who go by and use different pronouns. It's really exciting because there are so many different types of kids in this book. Do you see all of these kids? Do any of these kids look like you or like people you might know? That's the first thing I like to do when I read books is I like to look at the cover. This is called the front cover. The front cover usually has pictures and a title. The title of this book are the big words. So, they, she, he, easy as A, B, C. That's called the title. Can you say title? Good, title. The title is always gonna be in the bigger words. That's usually how it happens. And then when you look at the bottom, this says, by Maya and Matthew. Now, this means that Maya and Matthew wrote this book. They are the authors. Can you say author? Good. The author is the person who writes the book. The author is the person who writes the book. Now, the illustrator is the person who draws the pictures. So the author writes the book, the illustrator draws the pictures. Can you say that? The author writes the book. The illustrator draws the pictures. Very good. Sometimes illustrators paint pictures, but that's a different conversation for another day. So we have our front cover. If I turn it around, we have the back cover. And what's really interesting is that books wouldn't be able to be held together if they didn't have this right here. So as you see, I have the front cover and when I turn the book to the side like this, this is called the spine. Can you say spine? Spine. Now, we have spines in our backs. The spines in our backs help us stand up and sit up and do all of the things that we're able to do if we're able to do them. We can walk if we're able to walk. It's generally because of our spine. Some of us are able to walk. And that's generally because there might be something wrong with the spine. Now, it's the same for a book. If there was no spine or something was wrong with the spine, all of the pages, they might just fall out. So it's very important to know what the spine is and what it does. So we have front cover, back cover, spine. And here is the title. The title tells us what the book is going to be about. And I think that this book, is going to be about pronouns because it says they, she, he. Easy as A, B, C. Now, remember, anytime you're reading a book, 
one of the first things that you want to do is look at the front cover and you want to look at the pictures and you want to guess what the book is going to be about based on those pictures. Now I'm looking here and I'm seeing all of these little fancy kids that I'm so excited to read about. There's one kid here. This kid looks like they're dancing. There's another kid here. This kid, wait, also looks like they're dancing. And this kid too, and this kid, oh, there are so many kids. And they look like they're enjoying themselves and having fun. That's really exciting. Well, let's get to reading it. Remember, okay? I might read this like a song, but it'll be fun. I promise. They, she, he. Z, tree, me, f. They didn't finish that word. Easy as A, B, C. Out on the dance floor, we love to sing they. They is a way to let everyone be. No one left out and everyone free. Then we're friends. We sing they, she, he, z. Making it as easy as A, B, C, D. Look up here, it says they, 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 they. They're singing. Can you sing that? They, 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 they. New friends are everywhere waiting to play. How exciting. Ooh, I see the letter A. I'm, I'm hyped now. Ari loves to arabesque. They hold their pose with ease. Brody is a break dancer. Brody loves to freeze. You see how I froze? Corey leaps high like a cat. She springs and leaps and bounds. Diego drums and dances. Tree has all the sounds. So notice when I'm reading this book, you see the words that are in different colors? Those are different pronouns that these kids like to be called. So this kid, Corey, likes to be called she. And this kid, Diego, likes to be called tree. There are so many different pronouns and they're all so creative. And one thing I notice about all these kids, even though they have different pronouns, it looks like they all love to do really cool things. So as you're listening to this book, I want you to think about some of the really cool things you love to do and see if you can find any kids that like to do some of the same things as you. And then you can compare your pronouns to theirs. Ebony flies everywhere. They spread their arms like wings. Fawn is free as a flower. Fawn can bring the spring. Ooh, I'm hyped for fawn. Let me tell you why, because we are in spring. I love the spring. Fawn can bring the spring. Ooh, we're on letter G now. Let's see who it is. G is going fast and strong. She's dancing on the go. Harvey's heart beats happily. Hip hop makes her flow. Hey, hip hop makes her flow. Hey, hip hop <laughs> makes her flow. Hey. Told y'all I like to sing and dance. Me and Harvey will get along because she loves hip hop. And so do I. Letter I. Indigo's into insects. Z loves the buzzing vibe. Jorge jams to jazzy tunes. He or they can jive. Ooh, I love, first of all, let me tell you something about Jorge, okay? Jorge, besides jamming to jazzy tunes, really loves to be called two different types of pronouns. So you're gonna meet people that like to be called more than one thing. They like to be called or use more than one pronoun and that's so exciting. Jorge likes to use he and they. Either of those feel good to Jorge. So when you think about the types of pronouns you like to use, remember you don't have to think of just one. If it feels good for you to use more than one, then you can. Just make sure that whenever you're talking about your friends or your family members, you ask. Kelly can kick super high. His heart lives in the sky. Lourdes sings of lofty heights. Their songs let them fly. Now, 
I want to tell you something really important that might be a little bit hard to understand, but that's why we're learning about it together. It's even hard for some adults to understand, but let me tell you this so that you can start to think about it. I want you to think and look at Kelly, right? Look at Kelly. Kelly likes to use the pronouns he, him, and his. Now, if you look at Kelly, you might not think that because you might be used to hearing people call people that look like Kelly, she, or her, or refer to them as girls. Now, I'm gonna let you in on a big secret. Just because people dress or might look a certain way on the outside, that doesn't necessarily mean that they feel that way on the inside. Sometimes we feel really differently on the inside than we do on the outside. And sometimes it takes us a while to, you know, figure those things out and that's okay. But I need you to know that the most important thing that you can do for kids like Kelly is to show them respect, to make them understand that you care about who they are. And you can do that by calling Kelly by their name and referring to Kelly by his correct pronouns, he, him. So no matter what Kelly dresses like or looks like, if Kelly says, I like to be called he, I want you to call me him, then it's up to you to respect that and show Kelly some love and make sure he feels so good about his pronouns. Can you do that? Okay, in woke kindergarten, that's what we do. So make sure you do that. Let's go back to Lourdes. We might have forgotten what Lourdes was doing. Lourdes sings of lofty heights. Lofty it means pretty high. Their songs let them fly. Marley is a star mermaid. He or she flows with the sea. Ooh, hoo -hoo, you like mermaids? Nathan is a nesting bird. He just wants to be. Ocean's arms are open wide. Tree swings and sways about. Paul pretends to be a plant. Paul grows up and out. Ooh, this is so important. Remember before I was talking about people's names, right? And what they like to be called. Some people really prefer you to call them by their name, especially, especially if you have trouble calling them by their pronouns. And maybe you're having trouble because you're still learning about them and that's okay. So instead of calling someone he or she or they or Z or tree, you can call them by their name. That's so important. Sometimes if you forget or you don't know someone's pronouns, it's your best bet to ask them their names and then call them their name. So this is Paul. Paul wants us to call them Paul. And so that's what we'll do. Just like if you see me and you forget that my pronouns are they, them, you can call me Key, right? Because that's the name that I really like to be called. So if you forget someone's pronouns or you don't remember someone's pronouns or you don't know what someone's pronouns are, you can call them by their name. Good, ooh, call them by their name. Hey, call them by their name. Hey, and we're back. Quetzal is so, so quiet. Skirt, back up. I made a mistake. I wanted to stop the video and tell you that I accidentally mispronounced Quetzal's name. Instead of saying Quetzal, I said something else. And it's not okay for me to keep reading if I knew that I made that mistake. Now, I'm gonna keep it real with you. I'm a little embarrassed and it's okay to be embarrassed. Sometimes we get embarrassed when we make mistakes. The most important thing is that we love ourselves enough to say when we've made a mistake. Because when we can do that, we give other people who we may have hurt when we made the mistake, space and time to heal from that mistake. So I want to apologize to Quetzal and say, I'm so sorry Quetzal that I mispronounced your name, but now I know better, so I'm gonna do better. Back to the book. He rests just like a queen. Renee is into rainbows. 
he creates the scene. I love me some rainbows. I got rainbows up on this wall. Sky is like a star so bright. All the pronouns are right. Ooh, so Sky likes to be called all the pronouns. Ty is tiger in the night. He claims his own might. Now, when we say he claims his own might, then he just knows he's strong. Are you strong? Are you mighty? You're mighty and strong? Because that's how Ty feels. He's claiming that. That means he's owning it. He understands that. He knows he's strong. Letter U already. Una is a unicorn. They prance to their own sound. Viola's a volcano. Her power's in her ground. Ooh, you know what I noticed about Viola? Viola looks like she has the coolest wheelchair to ever grace the planet. I mean, I love the purples. You see the purples? When it says her power is in her ground, what do you think that means? That Viola's power is in her ground. I want you to think about that and I want you to talk to the adult or the person that's watching this story with you or this book and I want you to think about what do they mean by her power is in her ground think about that Ren whistles when she dances she knows just what to do Xander exaggerates moves <laughs> They're extremely cool. Let me tell you something, Xander. Let me tell you something. Your moves are so cool. Look at Xander. He look like that's what he do. I mean, I can't do as I can't do what Xander's doing, but maybe you can. If you have an extremely cool dance move, please do it right now. Please do it right now and tell whoever is with you to record the dance move so that we can compare it to Xander's and see whose is cooler. Let's see about that. Almost done. Yoli yells, yes, joyously. Their voice becomes the song. <laughs> you, see I did, you see how I did that? Let's try that again. Yoli yells, yes, joyously. Their voice becomes the song. So if their voice became the song, that means they went yes or yes or yes. You try that. Can you sing yes for me? Yes. <laughs> so good. Zahara zooms in and out. Z knows that Z belongs. Ooh, that felt so good. Zahara knows that Z belongs. Z is another really cool pronoun that some people use. Now, one thing that I've learned about all these kids is because they are so affirmative of themselves, that means they love themselves so much, they know who they are, it feels like they feel good about belonging. And that because their friends are using their correct pronouns, that makes them feel even better inside. And we always want the people that we love and care about and the people we know and don't know, we want everybody to feel good inside, right? So it's up to us to make sure that we play our part and we respect people's names and we respect people's pronouns and who they are inside. Uh-oh, here we go. Now's your chance. We need your moves. Join the dance. There's always room. Remember I told you, you're supposed to be getting ready to do your dance moves. And look at all the children. All the children. If you get this book, you can go and you can read their names. A for Ari. B for B, -B Brody. C for K, K Corey. D for D, D Diego. Right? I can keep going. Maya makes the art in words. Oh, we found my Look, Maya makes the art and the words. That means that Maya is the illustrator because they're the ones that made all the really cool art that you saw. And they make the words, so they're also the author, and the author writes the words, right? Matthew dreams and tinkers. He makes the work tight. Together they make books for the kids they used to be and for their own two kids so all kids can grow free. So look, Maya and Matthew work so hard and they work together to make this book just right for all of you. How exciting. The end. I finished reading this book. 
super, 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 super exciting. I love that you read this book with me. They, she, he, easy as ABC. And I hope that you're able to get a copy of it for yourself because it's such a good book to have because it helps you know and understand and learn and appreciate and accept people for who they are and who they feel like they are, not only on the outside, but also on the inside. So remember, the next time you need a little bit of help remembering pronouns or you want a little bit of fun or a little bit of support in figuring it out, come back to this book, They, She, He, Easy As ABC, and get your fix from Woke Kindergarten. Thank you all for reading with me. I'll see you next time. If you like this video, check out these other Woke Kindergarten videos, and make sure to like, subscribe, and share with your community. Till next time, fam.